So this video is going to walk through a process for creating a digital section by using AutoCAD Linework, bringing that into Photoshop, and collaging a series of images on top to create a photorealistic section. Along the way, we'll talk about different methods for doing this, where maybe you're not going for a photorealistic approach, but uh, instead going for more of a hand-drafted approach, and how you'd use a similar process to execute that. It starts with creating uh, a framework for the section using line work and AutoCAD. In this case, we've got a visitor center at a uh, wetland educational facility and created a, a section line here. Uh, from there, we know this is roughly where we want to create our section. So we're going to rotate to UCS, uh, click on this line, and then type PLA in, hit spacebar twice. And what this does is it rotates our line work. From here, we can actually just project lines down uh, to start to build the section. Now in this process, it's important to know what uh, you're actually wanting to build uh, and utilize in AutoCAD versus what you probably intend to collage and create in Photoshop. In my case, I want to create uh, the general topography, uh, some of the outdoor classroom or terracing components, uh, the boardwalk, and of course, uh, a rough idea for uh, the initial stages of what this facility could look like. As we move into Photoshop, we'll de-emphasize the architecture, use photographs and context images uh, to build up the landscape around it. It's also helpful to have a graphic scale in there as you start to resize elements, uh, just to have something quick to uh, utilize to understand the heights uh, and scales of things that you're creating. And once you've established this, uh, it's simply creating a layout, in this case a 22 by 34 sheet, with a viewport that puts our line work to scale using plot styles uh, to kind of get the line work somewhat close uh, and then printing this out. And once we've done that, we open this up in Photoshop. This is a PDF. We use the DWG to PDF plotter that is built into AutoCAD. We plot it as a PDF and open it up into Photoshop. Now, as you notice, the line work comes in, but it's also no white background. It just has that transparency. And so you see the uh, checkerboard image that's at the back of Photoshop. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is actually create a new layer, call this layer background, and we're going to fill that color white. And I'll hit D uh, to reset my default colors, and on my Mac I'm going to hit Command Delete. What this does is fills with the background layer. If you're on a PC, it's Control and Backspace. We'll fill with that same background color of white. We'll drag it below our layer one, which we're going to rename line work. Now for the sake of this tutorial, I'm actually going to drag my layers out, uh, collapse this down, and just dock them over here on the side so that they're always open. We can kind of see what we're working with as we build this section. Another thing I'm going to do is just clean up some of the line work. In my case, I'm going to remove this text, but also uh, the two lines that represent uh, the viewport that was in here. And I'll just do this with the marquee tool. And hit, hit M for marquee, this tool right up here, and it defaults to the rectangular marquee. I'm going to highlight all of this and just tap delete. One of the first things I'm going to do is actually uh, just color in the buildings with a solid gray color. It's as simple as zooming in, creating a new layer, call it building. I'm going to do two different layers. We'll say building foreground, create a new one. We'll say building background, and one more new layer, we'll call it uh, windows. This way we can have three different uh, levels of or this gray color that we're going to put on here. Now for the windows, I'm just going to start uh, by hitting G. Uh, that's going to default to your gradient tool if this is the first time you're opening up Photoshop. I'm going to click and hold on the gradient tool and pick the paint bucket tool. Now, equally as important is that I go up here and I check all layers. If you don't do that and you just click, it's going to fill the entirety of your area with this, uh, this color, whatever your foreground color is. By checking all layers, it's going to allow me to zero in to the line work here. So what I'm going to do is I'll initially put windows on its own layer. Uh, we'll go to building foreground. We'll put these components on a layer. And then we'll go to building background. and We'll put this background building on a layer as well. Now, obviously, I don't want uh, these buildings to be solid black, so I'm going to dial back the opacity on them. I know I want my windows to probably be the lightest, so I'm going to drag the word opacity over and dial it back a little bit. We'll go to building background. I want it to be the second lightest, so we'll go a little bit higher, uh, something maybe in this range. Uh, and then, of course, for the building foreground, 
uh, one a little bit darker. But again, all of this is going to be pretty light. Probably going to keep adjusting these throughout the life of the section. One more thing is, I'm, while I want to keep them conceptual and it's just sort of a loose idea, I do think it's always a, a nice idea to uh, create a new layer. We'll call it Building Shadows and to paint in some shadows. Maybe it's where uh, the eaves kind of overhang or where uh, the windows and the mullions that are there cast a shadow on the windows as well. Uh, for me, it's going to be uh, typically done with a brush. I hit B for brush. This brings up our brush tool, make sure we're not on any of the others. Uh, I'm just going to go here back to one of my most basic ones. We'll say a soft round. I don't know. It might hover in the middle. Uh, your hard round brush is going to be 100%. Soft round is going to be zero. Uh, so I'll find something in there. I use my brackets to change the size of this brush right here. And what I might do is click right here, come up to the top, hold shift, and click right here. Now, in some cases, you might use actually the lasso tool to lasso in uh, the shadow right here. You could just click, drag this lasso over, and then just kind of fill in with the foreground color, whether you're using a brush to sort of fill in or using... Uh, the autofill, which is Alt Delete on or Alt Backspace on a PC, or Option Delete on a Mac, uh, which fills with that foreground color. And so, in this case, I'm going to take a little bit of time to put in those shadows. Of course, uh, dial back the opacity on that just to create uh, some depth to this building. Now, some of the next steps at this point are just going to be to bring in some base color for different elements. And I can do that a couple different ways. I could actually bring an image of a certain material to apply in there. But for some of the smaller elements in my scene, I'm just going to keep it pretty generic. I'm going to choose a wood-like structure for um, the boardwalk and uh, for the same uh, with these terraces right here. Uh, so we'll just sort of place in a color, again, using a, a new layer, we'll say um, wood for this. And we'll just choose a color uh, somewhere in sort of a orange layer. Now, again, confirming that I've got all layers checked. What I can do is just click uh, these elements in right here for the different pieces that kind of fit this scene. Now, for other, other elements like concrete, I'm going to do the exact same thing. We'll just create a new layer for that and paint bucket it in with an appropriate color. We'll do one more for a water layer down here as we get to our uh, wetland edge. Call this water. And we'll zoom in. Now you'll notice right here, I can't actually use my uh, paint bucket as I want to choose something that's in uh, a bluer family right here. I can't actually choose the paint bucket. If I do that, it doesn't have an edge to run up to and it just sort of runs out. So there's a couple options we can do here. We can create a temporary layer where we just create a layer. Uh, brush in a line right here and paint bucket. That's one method. I'm going to undo that though. Uh, method I like to do is uh, just actually grab your marquee right here and click that in uh, and it just sort of runs up to the edge of the marquee and doesn't let it uh, get outside of that. So either method will uh, work for areas like this where we kind of run up against the edge. Now the next step is to actually bring in uh, different photographs of trees, uh, different types of vegetation. We'll do people and uh, some wildlife, in this case some birds that we're going to bring in as well, uh, that all kind of happen along that section cut line. Now for my uh, purposes, I'm actually going to pull up some, uh, some files that I have uh, in this digital section, uh, and it's just going to be a, a bunch of different resources in here. I've got uh, different things, including some site photographs, uh, in particular trees that I'm going to pull from. Also got a whole series of other blocks that I'm actually going to reference uh, for this as well. Now there's a lot of places online to find a different collection of trees. I'd say the, the best advice you can that I can give you on this is, is strictly to find uh, trees that are native to your area. Be particular on that. Find ones that are in uh, the same season. Just little details that, uh, that sometimes we overlook as we're sort of blending a bunch of different trees together. Uh, that's the approach that I would take. In this case, I'm going to open up, uh, we'll start with one tree in here, and I'll just go through the process for creating this one. Uh, sometimes they're going to come in as PNG files, they're already cut out, 
Uh, in my case, I'm opening up a TIFF file, which has this black background. And if I were to say Control A or Command A, uh, Command C for copy, come back here, and Command V for paste, what it's going to do is bring that uh, black background. I definitely don't need that. And oftentimes when you have a, a TIFF file like this, uh, you can go to the channels. And there's going to be an additional channel beyond the RGB or the red, green, blue channel. You're going to see this alpha channel. If you hold down Command on your Mac or Control on your PC and you hover over this layer icon, so not the layer itself or not the, uh, the eye for visibility over here, but the icon, and click on it, it's going to put that marquee around this. We'll come back to the, uh, the layer itself, Command C for copy and Command V for paste, and this time it's going to come in with just the tree itself. We'll use our uh, control T or our free transform uh, to move this around uh, to get it in the right location if you need to use your scale bar uh, to resize that. Uh, you certainly can. So I'm going to move this one out here. Uh, we'll hit enter to place uh, this in here. Now when you get close, you'll notice that sometimes uh, your, your move tool wants to jump around, whether you've got guides on or different things like that. If you hit V for move and then you just start to use your arrow keys, uh, you'll notice that you can nudge it down a little bit. Anytime you bring something in, you copy and paste it on a uh, into your Photoshop file, it's going to come in as layer zero. If you know you're going to copy this around a lot, it's probably helpful to rename this. Um, so we'll just call it tree one. Uh, in this case, you might name it after the uh, specific species. Uh, now just for demonstration purposes, as you pull this over and you start to copy these around, uh, and I do that by uh, having the move tool, holding down Alt on your PC or Option on your Mac, and it doubles up the cursor right there. You click and start to drag, and if you hold Shift, you can actually lock it in to um, parallel. And so uh, making sure that you're holding, holding down Option or Alt, uh, you can actually make a copy of that. But if you do that a lot, you'll start to notice that uh, these trees look exactly the same uh, because they are exactly the same. And so a few tricks you can do. You can use uh, your control T to resize it, making a little bigger helps. Uh, you can also uh, uh, pull these grips on the sides and if you hold shift while you do it, uh, you notice that it unlocks the locked ratio. Sometimes that helps as well. Uh, you can also right click inside the free transform and say flip horizontal. That'll help as well. Uh, but really one of the best things you can do uh, is a combination of erasing uh, a few things. So uh, to just kind of change uh, how that edge looks now using a uh, more subtle approach uh, to, to doing this is probably better but for our purposes we'll just kind of run with this. Uh, we'll kind of change up the the approach to the tree and you might want to do it to both so you don't get one that's super uh, lean and the other that's feeling more full. Uh, some other things you can do is get your stamp tool out. So this uh, hit S for stamp. Uh, if you notice you can uh, hold down option or alt to, to click a source area. Uh, you kind of move over and you can paint uh, in some of that. Sometimes works, uh, probably more often works better in the middle or you can start to fill in some gaps maybe uh, and, and hide some things, but even that looks a little choppy. Maybe your best approach is to find a variety of trees to, to put in here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through uh, and just grab a whole bunch of trees. After doing enough of these, I eventually created one single PSD file where I can just to open up uh, a lot of these files at one time, and so I'll do that here. Now, one of the best uses of the stamp brush is actually to uh, create a custom brush tip that allows you to quickly sort of paint something that looks almost leaf-like, and that's what I've created here. I'll jump back to just a basic brush and kind of demonstrate uh, as you're using this, you'll use the stamp. You can see you sort of just stamp that round brush, but that doesn't feel, it sort of paints the picture of a tree, but it, it does it in a, um, a very uh, structured, rigid edge to it. And so what we're going to do is go to Window and Brush Settings. This opens up this dialog here, and i got to make sure I'm on the stamp tool, so I'm going to hit S for stamp. First thing I'm going to choose is a brush tip shape. Uh, that looks like a leaf. Unfortunately, in Photoshop, you've got one that looks exactly like a leaf. The next thing we'll do is go to Shape Dynamics. We're going to change the size jitter. That means the variation of the size all the way up. I'm also going to change the angle jitter all the way up. I'm going to slightly move the roundness jitter. 
Uh, this rotates the brush tip as it moves around. This uh, changes the, uh, the sort of roundness of it. Um, next, going to go to scattering. I'm going to scatter it a pretty good amount. Bump the count up to where it really gets rough. And uh, the count jitter is just how often it uh, varies between a lot of those leaves and very few. And so once I've got that in here, I'm just going to hold, again, Option on my keyboard, Alt on a PC, and click uh, the source point of where I want to start the stamp. Uh, I'll then come down here and start to just paint. And you can see very quickly, uh, in my case, I need to change my brush size down a little bit, uh, but I'm going to hold uh, Alt to get this started and then just sort of paint uh, very quickly. And what this can do, it can make a tree that you know might appear not as full uh, to be fuller. Uh, it can also, again, for my purposes, just kind of vary up uh, what I want that tree uh, to look like so that it can uh, just look different than other trees. Now you got to be careful as well and changing that source point and sort of um, holding down alt and picking where it picks up the stamp from and, and changing that's going to be helpful. But I think over time what you'll see is trees that look similar but don't look the same if you're careful enough with that approach. Now at some point I'm going to want some of these trees to actually be in the background. You can see I've moved them behind my line work, the building foreground, all those building colors that we created right off the bat. And I want them to appear as if they're kind of in the distance uh, behind it. And to do that, obviously the first thing I need to do is turn down the opacity. Now, the second thing I need to do is, is kind of white them out uh, with this line work. And the reason they're showing up right here is because uh, if you remember the building foreground was created just as a solid black color, but we've turned back the opacity uh, quite a lot in here. So it's probably about time I created uh, what I'm going to call a white out layer. Uh, there's a couple different ways to do this. I could just uh, get my eraser out and sort of erase right here, but I think um, I'm going to want to maybe potentially move these trees around later. So to do that white out layer, what I'm going to do is actually uh, control or command click on the building foreground uh, layer right here. I'm going to hold shift, click on the building background layer, and then hold sh still holding shift and command. I'm going to click on the windows, and it's going to put a marquee around all of these components. I can also go ahead and click on uh, line work and building shadows, uh, but those should more or less overlap. And what this is going to do is select my building right here. We'll come to uh, underneath the line work layer, but above the tree layer, I'm going to create a new one. And just to kind of keep things separate, I'm going to call it white out. Now, much like we uh, placed white in the entire background right here, what we're going to do is uh, hold command and delete or control backspace if you're on a PC, and you can just fill in your selection. So what this is going to, in essence, do is it's filling in uh, where our uh, building was with just a white layer. You can see I can turn that layer on and off. It just sits right underneath the line work. Uh, the foreground uh, for the building, the background building, the windows, and the shadows. And it's just going to mask that tree behind it. I can still actually grab this tree, move it, um, and so this is the advantage of not having it cut out. I don't really know what's going to be in the background, but I know that I'm going to have a few of these things in here just to move around. Now, in some cases, you're actually going to have trees that uh, feel more vibrant than others. As we talked about, you want to have a strategy for finding ones that are in similar seasons, but also in similar, feel like they're in a similar atmosphere. In this case, you can see these four trees uh, that we've worked on actually feel like they're a little uh, too heavy or too dark. So what I'm going to do is highlight all of these. We'll right click, say Merge Layers or Command E is the shortcut for that. We'll go to Image Adjustments, and uh, first I'm going to play with the curves. Actually, in this case, try the levels. We'll do that one. Feel better about that. There we go. So something just to brighten it up right there. In this case, levels works. And we can go to hue and saturation if we felt like we needed to beef them back up or change the hue a little. In this case, it's going to be too much. But you can see you can kind of change uh, the general color of this. I'm going to bump it back to about zero for the hue. Um, and just make some minor tweaks to these trees to get them to all blend together. Now beyond trees, I also want to put in uh, some stuff that's going to be at the ground level, whether that's grasses or shrubs uh, or different types of uh, 
ground cover material, uh, we'll bring in an image, we'll move those pieces around, um, and again go back to uh, some of my resources here uh, to pull that off. And I've got a, a native grass that's cut out already, we'll bring it in, paste it, Oops. copy it first, then paste it in here. What I'm going to do is simply zoom in, uh, resize this down, erase what looks like a little remnant over on this side. and resize this grass piece. I'm going to put it in here. Obviously you want to reference your plan for where these elements are. Uh, in this case it's actually behind the trees. Uh, so I'm going to make sure I drag it uh, behind here uh, and just sort of place it in the scene. Again using similar uh, technique for the trees and copying them. I'm going to hold down Alt or Option, uh, drag it over. It's going to create a new layer when I do that. Uh, but I can create a series of uh, these grasses in here. Uh, just from a single image. Now similar to trees you might have an area where uh, you've got grasses but they need to be um, you know, a little shorter, maybe a different color uh, just to uh, accentuate some variety in there. It's similar to adjusting the hue and saturation here. I'm going to image adjustments, hue and saturation. I kind of change the hue a little bit, maybe try to find something that's a little more green and lush. Uh, in this case. And so we'll drag uh, this over similarly. I'm not worrying about the fact that it actually is below uh, our section cut line. In the same way we sort of created a, a whiteout that's going to hide uh, the trees behind the building, we're going to create a little line here that's going to help us hide where all of this stuff sits below uh, that section line. And we might even come back with a brush and beef up that section line right there. But for now what I'm going to do is just continue to copy uh, these ground plane materials around in here just to uh, kind of fill out the rest of the scene. Now there's certainly more variety that can be happening uh, plant material wise but for the purposes of this we'll kind of stick to this basic palette. What you'll notice especially as you copy small things around you're going to get a whole series of layers. Um, so you can see that this original one that was layer uh, 11 and it's copied 13 times. Uh, what I can do is I've got a couple options. If I wanted to keep them all individual pieces, I could just highlight all of them by clicking the bottom one, holding shift and clicking the top. And then I could just click a folder icon. What it does, it'll dump all of these in a folder together. Similar to this right here, I can grab this whole series and put them in a folder. And, and maybe that's sufficient for what you want to do. Uh, the other option would be simply to uh, select all of these and what we did with the trees we right click on them and say merge layers. For me I'm just going to go ahead and keep them in a folder. It increases the file size for sure uh, but this isn't going to have too many moving parts in that section. At this point I think it's time to actually uh, deal with that scenario where we're talking about where the grasses are kind of coming below here uh, causing issues uh, in the section. Uh, as far as them uh, protruding below that section line. There's two things we're going to do. One is we're just going to come back with a black brush, kind of beef up that section line. The second thing is I'm going to create that whiteout layer that covers it up. Let's start with that whiteout layer first. Uh, I'm just going to turn these two groups off so that we can just see uh, what's happening here. In the same way that um, I had the marquee earlier and allowed me just a paint bucket in this area, I'm going to create a new layer. We'll go ahead and name it, uh, let's say, subsection whiteout. And I'm going to grab my uh, default colors by hitting D. And then command, uh, or actually I'm going to use my paint bucket, G. We'll flip these to where white is the foreground color. And I'm just going to click right in here. Now, I don't know what that's done. Uh, it's hard to tell when it's just white. So if I command click on this layer, I am going to see that it put that white all the way up to the bottom there. And so if I turn back on the layers, we'll notice that we can't see underneath. Uh, if I turn that off, you can kind of follow what it's doing there. And so by quickly creating that, uh, that marquee, I can highlight that. Now the next thing I might do here uh, is bring all of this stuff below the section line itself. So part of that might just be bringing that section line work um, a little bit forward. I could bring it right here. Uh, to where it jumps in front. Now I can see that bold line. 
As I mentioned, additionally, what I might do is uh, say I'm going to bold the section line, just creating a layer for that. Uh, hitting B for my brush, I'm going to change it from this to just a hard round brush. Change the size down to whatever I want to work with. I'm just going to uh, oops, change it back to black as the foreground color, flow is all the way up, and I'm just going to click and hold shift and click and just kind of follow this around. It's going to take some time, but you, you want to be careful when you do it. It's not always perfect. I think uh, doing this in um, AutoCAD is probably the better approach, but uh, just to rough it in in Photoshop, this would be a perfectly fine ap approach to doing that. Now, a few more things we're going to do here is one, bring in a background image. I'm going to go ahead and close uh, my trees uh, and those files that I was using to bring this in. I'm going to go back to uh, the files that I have and go into the site photographs. Got a few different ones. You probably want to find the one that matches up best with um, your particular backdrop for the site. So we'll open these with Photoshop. In this case, I'm going to grab this one by saying Control A, Control C, or Command A, Command C on my Mac, and Command V inside here to paste it. Now it's going to be the background, so I'm going to kind of zoom all the way to the back and drop it in there. We'll sort of scale this up using our free transform. What's well, nice is our white out for the bottom is kind of whiting out uh, that background. It'll sneak below it here, but that's okay. We can just come back and erase it. I'm just trying to get some sort of uh, alignment uh, for my photo. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm going to just say this for our purposes here. Maybe move it over. And again, grab my marquee, select all this at the bottom and hit delete. And even select this edge right here and hit delete as well. Now it's still too bold, so I'm going to hit uh, the opacity, turn it back to 3 or maybe bump it up to 4. Somewhere in there you can figure out uh, the right approach. There's a few things you can do from here. Um, one is simply uh, just getting an eraser, uh, changing it from a sort of hard round to a soft round and changing the size up. Maybe kind of come in and just lightly uh, take down that, that rough edge. Uh, that's around there. Um, I'm going to back up a little bit and restore that because I want to try one other approach. And, you know, it's uh, a bunch of different ways to do this. One of the things I like to do is just to create a uh, layer in front of it. Consider this like a dummy layer. Choose a brush I like, which is this uh, legacy brush under wet media called Drippy Water. And uh, I'm actually going to create. Uh, the general um, amount or sort of view of the sky that I want. Uh, so this is going to be uh, more or less the, um, the um, where I want the sky to show up. You could do this with a layer mask, um, but for most folks, I don't, I don't know, a lot of folks don't like to use layer mask or are sort of deceptive to work with. So you can just kind of paint a temporary layer now. I'm going to control or command click on this layer. It puts a marquee around it. Turn that layer off. Uh, and I can go to select inverse. And what it does is it flips the selection. I'll go to my sky and just hit delete. And what it does is it sort of wraps the sky around using that approach right there. It's a little heavy right here. I kind of liked the first approach that I had. But just for the sh sake of showing a few different ones, we'll go with this. I'm going to come back and uh, kind of soften that up. All right, now one of the last things that I'm going to do in here is frankly one of the more important things uh, for this section, or at least for this section itself. I mean, diagramming excluded, I need people in here. So people telling me kind of the general scale of the site, how people are going to use the site. That's going to work a lot like how we've sort of cut out pictures of trees and brought them in. Uh, we can grab cut out pictures of people and actually bring them into the site. Uh, there's a ton of great websites out there, way more than actually trees. Uh, so just finding those uh, those cut out people and bring them in, uh, making sure they're similar to uh, the trees that they're in sort of the same season. You don't have people wearing winter clothes next to people with summer clothes. Um, that they fit the users of your site might be the most important thing. That they match sort of 
who your client is for this. So finding those right people is the first step. Uh, bringing them in, making sure they're the right scale is the next step. Uh, so for me, again, I'm going to go back to my resources. I've got uh, a lot of different places with people. Um, maybe one that you see uh, too much is, uh, where is it? Yes, this one, right? So uh, you see this in, in way too many renderings, uh, so we might as well use it in this one too. But uh, we'll grab these people, we'll open them up in their own Photoshop file. We'll say Control A, Control C. What's different about this versus the trees, they're already cut out. It's a PNG file. It's way more user friendly. I don't have to go to the channels, anything like that. We'll come back here uh, and paste them in. Now I've got to remember they're going to paste on a new layer, in this case, layer 14. Better bring them all the way up to the top. Uh, just for now, and we will dump them in. Again, using Control T to make sure we get them to the right scale. Uh, in my case, I'm going to use a combination of uh, the scale that I know against uh, the rulers that I have in here uh, to make sure that I've got them uh, the appropriate size. So right about there. So we can put these people uh, in there. I'll do that for several different people throughout the section just to kind of fill up the scene. All right, so at this point I've actually broken my own rule about finding people who are in the same uh, season. So what I'm going to do is actually something that uh, I do in a lot of my sections, which is actually turn the folks into silhouettes. It de-emphasizes the people themselves, but uh, kind of retains their scale and their activity and how they cluster and where they cluster on the site. So to do that, what I'm going to do is actually... Uh, grab all my people and merge them onto the same layer. So it helps to know which layer you started on. So I've got uh, these people on layer 14 uh, and then kind of all across here. Uh, making sure I know where they are, I'll kind of select all of them. Yeah, this, this collection of layers right here. So we'll start at 14, I'll select them all. And then as I mentioned earlier, right click and merge layers. You can just do command E uh, to merge them all. And so you should find that you can turn them all on and off. Now I'm actually going to retain them just in case I want to uh, go back to this. And so I'll drag this layer over the new layer icon. It creates a second layer right here. That's when I'm going to actually control or command click on the layer icon. And much like we've done in several instances, it puts the marching ants or the marquee around all the folks here. Hit D to go back to my default layers. Hold down Option and hit Delete or Alt Delete on a Mac. It fills with that foreground color. Uh, command D to deselect and I very quickly sort of put all the people in here as well. It also helps to put in uh, things like birds. I've got just a JPEG uh, as well that I'm going to open up. Control A, Control C. Now these birds in particular, they come in as on a white layer. So I'm just going to, uh, or with that white background, I'm just going to put them into place and then just go to multiply and multiply them in here. Um, a lot of great sections are going to emphasize the wildlife that, that might actually happen in there as well. And so this is kind of a nice touch uh, to add. Now for the sake of this section, I'm going to leave it done. Uh, if I had to critique it, I'd say, man, I need more variety in how the ground plane is working with uh, the vegetation there. Uh, just a little more nuance uh, in my line work uh, in this particular area probably need to rethink these trees and, and the planting plan in general. I think these work and the background works, but uh, some other areas where I need to do some minor tweaks. From here, I'd probably take it into Illustrator, uh, start to call out through diagramming uh, maybe the existing uh, section line uh, that in this case kind of drops down a little bit uh, to emphasize the fill that needs to happen here. Might also diagram uh, you know, as a wetland educational facility some of the plant materials that are going to be highlighted uh, in this terracing area right here as part of the educational component. So a lot of different diagramming components you can do, but for the purposes of just building the illustrative section, I think uh, this is where I'm going to stop at this point. Now I've opened up this section. It's a completely different approach uh, aesthetically, but it's really similar in terms of how it's pieced together. Uh, you can see I've got a series of layers over here as uh, I've got the people all together uh, and of course the birds in there as well. Uh, the AutoCAD line work you can see is, is sort of built in here and just using solid colors to fill uh, in this uh, for the boardwalk and of course the materials in here as well. Uh, the subsurface is a little different. It uses that drippy water brush and a couple different layers to kind of get some depth to it. 
Uh, but the trees and vegetation is probably where you're going to see the biggest difference uh, from an aesthetic standpoint. In this case, we've taken uh, individually drawn trees. In this case, there's a whole trees layer. Uh, so these trees are in here. Uh, in fact, some of them are repeats where we just uh, copied them over, flipped them around, changed the opacity, and you kind of de-emphasize it by overlapping them. But if you get a few solid trees that you have drawn, you can uh, put these in just the black and white uh, line work. Now, in addition to it, you can see that there is uh, tree color layers. In fact, there's several of them. In this case, I've got three right here uh, that as we sort of paint on uh, different opacities, uh, different shades of green, you kind of get a different texture. And it's just a digital color approach to sort of splattering this on here. Uh, the ground plane's the exact same way. It's a series of individually drawn plants and grasses uh, that are in here with, of course, digital color brought in uh, for both the water, uh, in this case, uh, just the green. Uh, evokes sort of a marker, uh, watercolor, uh, sloppy feel uh, to it, I, I think in a good way. Uh, it's not um, as photorealistic and sharp as this, but I think they both get the job done as far as articulating uh, what we want to articulate for uh, just creating these sections. Again, similar process, AutoCAD line work, plotting it to a known scale, uh, bringing it into Photoshop and creating a series of layers, copying around a series of elements that build uh, this section into what it is. So while this is a longer video than typical, I hope it's a useful demonstration of how you might start to layer and build some of your section components uh, into an illustrative section by using opacity, changing hue and saturation, using the stamp tool, uh, and just in general building this cohesive but flexible and editable, 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 one of those approaches to actually doing a section.